Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorial for Beginners. This time we're doing interfaces. Interfaces can be really confusing to a beginner, especially learning it alongside abstract classes. So what I'm going to do for the purposes of this tutorial is teach a little bit about the differences between an abstract class and an interface, and then go into how to implement an interface and when you might use it instead of an abstract class. So to recap our abstract class, you can have public properties and public methods with their implementation, and those are available to you in your derived class. You can also define abstract methods, which have to be overridden in your derived class. So you can sort of give a blueprint of what needs to be there while also hiding away some logic but still making it accessible. When it comes to interfaces, this is the part that you're usually going to be creating. You're not going to be creating logic that you're going to hide away, but instead you're going to be creating a list of methods called a contract that another derived class has to implement. So that you're aware in the future, I will say that C Sharp has recently added some features to interfaces like default method implementations and the ability to use statics. But for this tutorial, we're going to stick to the basics so that interfaces don't seem too confusing. So let's change person into an interface so we can see a little bit more about the differences. First, I'm going to comment this code out so we can piece it back in. Next, instead of an abstract class, we want to create an interface. Interfaces are generally started with an I for interface, and that's just an agreed upon convention. So then we want our person to be an I person. So now let's talk about our logic. Our abstract class had two properties, first and last name. If we put those in our interface, which we can do, they are not going to be available to our employee. It works slightly different than an abstract class in that this is part of the contract that has to be implemented by employee. So now, if we hover this, it will tell you employee does not implement interface member, first name or last name. So what we'll have to do is we will have to implement these properties in employee. And now this is okay. So if we think back to our patient and visitor who were also person, now if we change those to I person, they would also have to implement first name and last name from the I person interface. So this interface is just guaranteeing that anybody that implements I person is going to have what is in here. The next thing I'm going to mention about interfaces is because everything in here is going to be part of a contract that must be implemented, Everything in here by default is going to be public abstract. Now the fact that everything is abstract means we can't have a regular field inside of an interface. Now let's talk about our get full name method. In our abstract class, we defined the code, the implementation for this method, and we were able to use it in its children. But in our interface, what we're going to do we're going to have our method in our interfaces contract and whoever inherits from iPerson is going to have to implement the get full name method. So we're actually going to need to put this implementation into here just like that. So the last thing we need to do is add our get description method to our interface. And what you're going to notice is we still have an error. Well, here we have the override string, which we needed to override methods in our abstract class because they can have implementations. But since an interface doesn't have implementations, the override keyword doesn't make sense anymore. And because of that, we don't need it. So now we have an interface and our interface is implemented. So now let's get rid of this code and go take a look at program. So in here, I've created an employee with its properties set and I've done the same thing that I did for person last video. I've created an I person variable and set the employee equal to it. Just like you could create a list of I person or a method that takes a parameter of type I person. And then you can use that to generically contain and call its derived types. So I'm calling my person .get description, which is calling the employees implemented get description method. So that works basically the same as the abstract class did. One of the main reasons that I wanted to convert our abstract class instead of creating this interface from scratch is so that you could see that all of this logic had to be moved out and implemented in every derived class. So if we had employee is an I person, patient is an I person, visitor is an I person, visitor and patient would also have to have a first name and a last name, and they would also have to implement the get full name and get description methods, 
which would be basically duplicating the code exactly between all of those classes. So in that case, you may be better leaving this as an abstract class. So now you might be thinking, well, if an abstract class can do the same thing, it can work the same way, but it can have logic. Why would I ever use an interface? Well, we're going to start from scratch to show the awesome uses of interfaces. Okay, so what I've done here is I've created a dog class and a boat class, which on purpose have nothing to do with each other because one of the great things about interfaces is it lets you capture similar functionality and apply it to things that have nothing to do with each other. So for example, let's say our dog can move and also our boat can move. So we know these implementations are going to be very different because this will be walking on four legs and this will be propelled by an engine. But if we were creating a game, in our game we might want to say for each thing that can move, we want to move that thing. We might want to do this generically. So how do we do that given two classes that are so different from each other? So I'm going to start walking down the wrong path so you can see why an interface is right here. So I created an internal abstract class movable entity, which seems reasonable, and it has an abstract void move method. So I'm going to make dog inherit from movable entity, and I'm going to make boat inherit from movable entity, and then we're going to make our move methods overrides. So now in program, I could do something like this. I could create a dog and I could create a boat and then I could create a list of generically movable entities that contain dog and boat, and then I could move those entities. And that works, and that seems reasonable. But then down the road, you may think, well, hmm, my dog can make a sound, and also my boat can make a sound. So let's go ahead and write line bark, and let's write line honk for the horn. <laughs> Now you're thinking, oh no, I also need to make everything on the screen make a sound, and I would like to do that generically just like making the move. So do I add make sound to movable entity? Well, that doesn't make sense. I mean, it would work. We could do that. And then this would be override. And this would be override. And now all of a sudden we can do it but it's in movable entity. So what, what do we call this movable and soundable entity? Because basically what we're doing is we're trying to create a boat dog. And that doesn't make sense. This class, this doesn't make sense because they're not similar. They just have similar functionalities. So what we need to use here is an interface. And the reason behind that is very important. So if we look at dog, we see it inherits from movable entity, and so does boat. Well, in C Sharp, you can only inherit from one class at a time, but you can inherit from multiple interfaces at one time, allowing you to take these disjointed classes and give them multiple functionalities that are shared. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go add new item. I'm going to choose interface. And I'm going to add an interface called iMove. And then I'm going to add another one. I'm going to call that iMakeSound. Delete these here. Now I want to take the void move out of our combo class and put it into our iMove interface. And I want to take our void make sound and put it into our iMakeSound interface. Now I'm going to delete our movable entity all together and I'm going to go to our dog. So now our dog is going to inherit I move comma I make sound and we don't have to override because it's an interface and now we have implemented both interfaces so we are inheriting from two and we get a function from each. So we can do the same thing from boat just like that. So now instead of having one class that we have to try to force fit these separate classes into, we have multiple interfaces of shared functionality. So if we go back to program, now we could say for our movable entities, we want a list of anything that inherits from iMove. So we anything that could move, we could move generically. And just like we did this, we could say soundable 
And for anything that can sound, we could make a list of I make sound. And notice you can't move because right move is in the I move interface, but we could make the sound, right? So now our move doesn't do anything, but our make sound does. So we got a bark and a honk. And we didn't have to call dog.barkboat.honk, but instead we can say, hey, entity, make the sound, and it will work generically. Now, as your application grows, separating these functionalities into these interfaces only gets more and more helpful because you may have objects that move but don't make sound or vice versa. This way you can combine your interfaces in such a way that you only have them on what is applicable and then you can lump those together in a way that makes sense. Now, the last thing that I want to mention to kind of tie this all together is you have a dog, you have a boat, and now these are implementing these interfaces. But you may come across the fact that now you have a cat and a mouse, and you also have a car and a plane. And these things are related, and they do share something that would need to be a common class. Well, we could go and create abstract class vehicle and abstract class animal, and we could make our dog an animal. And we could make our boat a vehicle. And now you can see our class dog is an animal that can move and make sound. Our boat is a vehicle that can move and make sound. So while you can only inherit from one class, you can inherit from multiple interfaces, and you can do both at the same time. Using a combination of these can be extremely powerful, but the most important thing is to do what makes sense. Design it well and use what needs to be used when and where. Next up, we are changing gears and doing error handling, so that should be fun. Thank you for watching, everybody. I know this was probably complicated, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Happy coding out there, and as always, until next time, take care.